Hi, welcome to Amazing Science Lessons. I'm Cani Reza and we are doing a series on the unit of insects. This is a two-week unit and it's for early childhood, pre-K through first, second grade. How do we start a science lesson? Through our novelty. With novelty, we help the children connect to the subject area. It also helps them focus and it helps them raise their level of curiosity and interest. So through our novelty, I'm going to review. Now, what do we call this? Now by now, children will say it's an insect. How many parts does an insect have? Oh, three parts. So we'll review, but of course, I'm gonna spend more time reviewing what we studied yesterday. Yesterday, we went on a nature walk and we determined where insects live. And we saw that some insects live above the ground and some insects live under the ground. And um, we can go in, in and name some of the insects that live under the ground. We also looked at our literacy and see what literature has to say. We looked at the computer and the internet and we use technology to determine, okay, where else can we find, wh wh what other places do we find where insects live? So we will review where insects live. Today, let me give you our specific objective. We are going to compare and contrast the difference between an insect and a spider. Why am I using a spider? A spider is a very distinct little bug that they can easily compare. And remember, I'm working with small children I want them to be able to very distinctly identify the difference between one and the other. And of course, so many children believe that a spider is an insect. So I want them to understand that it is not an insect. So let's compare the two. So for my engagement, remember engagement is what helps children um, connect. It helps them do further investigation and it helps them identify the difference of whatever our, our uh, objective is. So I'm gonna give every child a spider, a plastic spider, of course, and I'm going to give them an insect. I'm gonna give them both because I want them to sit there and to look at the two. And I'm going to tell them, here again, we're using our five senses again, but mainly our sense of sight and a sense of touch. So I'm gonna say, children, I'm going to give you an insect and a spider. You are going to sit down and you're gonna observe the two. You're gonna take a look at the two and you're gonna compare. You're gonna say, oh, this one, oh, how many legs and how many legs? And you're gonna put them side by side, turn them around and look at them side by side it is going to be very interesting how quickly children capture and understand the information that I'm going to ask them next. I'm not, as if you notice, I'm not using books, I'm not using posters, I'm not using anything else but two little insects, plastic insects that they hold in their hand and they look at. So after we finish our engagement, I'm going to put up my a small chart and we're going to compare. This is a good way to compare with the uh, small children. We're going to look at insects which is one that they held in their hand and we're going to look at spiders which they also held in their hand and most of the children will probably know what a spider is even if they don't this is a good way to introduce the word spider. Now with this insect, how many legs does the insect have? Whether you had a bumblebee or a ladybug or a grasshopper, how many legs does an insect have? Six legs. So I'm gonna put six. Okay, look at your spider. Everybody look at the spider. How many legs did you count in the spider? And I can even show them the legs, the long ones. Oh, they have eight eight legs. Now let's look at the body parts. What does it say here? Body parts. 
how many body parts does the insect have and I can even bring out my big novelty and you can see the three distinct parts three body parts very good how many parts does a spider have oh, I see only two here two body parts that's correct two now let's look at the wings we can see that insects have wings, and we've studied all the last two weeks, for the last two weeks, that insects do have wings. Some of them have two wings, some of them have four wings, two on each side. For example, the bee has four. So how many wings? Between two to four wings are that the insects have. Do spiders have wings? No, spiders do not have wings. So we're going to say zero zero wings now what about eyes oh this week we learned that that insects have two eyes and we learned that they're either simple eyes or compound eyes now the spider that is hard to see you're right it is hard to see that the spider does have uh, four to eight eyes but you know what? If the children say two eyes, well, some spiders, okay, maybe they have four eyes. I am not going to go into detail. I'm not going to go in and read a book about spiders. I'm going to say, you know what? We may investigate that later, how many eyes the spider have. But I will tell you right now that the spider has four to eight eyes. <gasps> oh, okay, four to eight eyes. So I'm giving the children that information. After we finish with our chart, let's compare what is the difference between a spider and an insect that they have more legs, they have less body parts, they have less no wings at all. So this is a very good way to compare the two. And the best way is to look at the two of them. That's the best way to compare. But now notice how we're working with numbers we're working with words so we're, we're doing a lot of print a lot of reading at the same time a lot of math now let's connect through literacy towards I uh, th throughout the day I like to read different types of books so what I'm gonna I would read to the children today is hey little ant and of course this book is in Spanish as you can see but I enjoy reading hey little ant is one of my books this book is written by Philip and Hannah Hoos. And this is about a little ant that is someone is about ready to step on. So through this literacy, through this fictional book, I'm going to read a little story about an insect. And through this one, we can also review the different parts and also that it's small. What? Why is the insect afraid that they're going to step on him because he's tiny? The spider is also tiny. We can step on him. And uh, it, it does a lot of comparison where the, the little ant will tell him what he does at night and the little boy will say what he does and how he has seen little ants, what they do, that they take their food from them. So it, it is a good comparison book. As to the little boy saying what he does during the day, and then the little ant will say, well, I do the same thing during the day too, or during the night. I do have a home too. So it's an excellent comparison book. That's why I like this little story, and I, I wanted to be sure and, and show it to you and share it with you. Now let's connect through technology. What would you think would be an excellent word to put on our search engine on the iPad? And that is probably spiders. They're going into a new world now. From insects, they're going into spiders. And you know what? Through that, we will investigate this small little area. And I always like to give something that they can link to and investigate. And I would probably say, when you go look at the spiders, notice how many eyes they have in the pictures. The children that are reading will just start reading that how many eyes a spider has so it's a good way for them to continue to investigate and read and research about spiders and insects 
And of course, our final question is, tell me, share with us two things you learned about insects and spiders. Give me a good comparison between spiders and insects. And you can say, spiders have eight legs, while insects have six legs. So they need to share two things, two distinct things about the spider and the insect. It's a great comparison and contrast. This concludes our lesson for today and tune in as to how we conclude and how we complete our whole unit on spiders. I mean on insects, I'm sorry, thank you.